Late last fall, we started on our outdoor kitchen space in our backyard, and I contracted out the concrete and structure work with the plan of building a half wall, an island bar area of some kind, all the electrical and plumbing, a farm table, and any other building tasks that my wife adds to the list. In this video, I'm going to check off one of the easiest tasks on the list, the half wall. We decided that 42 inches was a good height for the wall for a couple reasons. First, it's short enough to obviously keep the natural breeze going through the structure, but it's also high enough to block the somewhat cluttered look from the road. For the layout, I marked the height I wanted on the corner post and set up a laser level to transfer the height to all of the other posts. To make the board placement foolproof, I made a pair of these jigs to screw to the posts. The center shelf area locates the 2x4 and the top of the jig locates the horizontal 2x6 that will be used on top. The part of the jig that hooks onto the, the back of the post, it also acts as a material rest so I can mark the length of the boards without ever using a tape measure. I bought the treated lumber for this over a month ago and the boards have all developed some kind of bow or twist in them while I was waiting for better weather or a little bit warmer weather. Some of them were pretty bad, but I was able to use all of it as intended. Here you can see how the jigs allow me to place the material between the posts and mark it for length. The time that it took to make these jigs is more than worth the convenience of not having to use a tape measure for layout or for determining where the top two boards go. It reduces the opportunity for human error, which is something I'll always accept help with. I made all of my cuts with a miter saw and Evolution sent me this saw to use and I thought because that it can cut both wood and metal, it would be pretty handy for this build. They also sent a 5% off coupon code that I'll leave in the description below. The top 2x4 board is test fit first, followed by the horizontal 2x6 board on top of it. And as you can see, the 2x6 is kind of crazy. Some clamps are added to make sure that it'll all work and then some practice arm rests and uh, elbow leaning took place to make sure that I did not want to adjust the height. I did not want any screw holes on top so I decided to use pocket hole screws for all of the frame construction. The 2x6 board gets pocket holes just on their ends and the 2x4 board gets pocket holes on the ends as well as along its entire length to attach it to the 2x6. The first bit of assembly can begin by clamping the 2x6 in place and securing it with pocket hole screws. Then the 2x4 is secured the same way to the posts and then to the 2x6. Because I'm not sure how long it will be before I add some type of decorative panel to the inside of the wall, I put all of the pocket holes facing the outside of the structure. <laughs> This space was built for an outdoor kitchen and entertaining space, so what better way to keep working than in the wonderful aroma of smoked spare ribs. Ribs on, back to the build. Next up, the vertical frame pieces can be cut. These are all the same length and all get pocket holes on their ends. Two thirds of them get pocket holes along their length as well. I'm basically building a large face frame here. So starting at the sides, the vertical pieces are secured to both the two x four above and the posts. Then the center 2x4 is added, followed by the bottom 2x4. This is secured from above as well as to the posts. Back to time-lapse mode to repeat everything else in the other three wall sections. With the woodworking done, the metalwork can begin, and I was only able to make a, a dozen or so cuts on some J-trim before getting rained out. I think I got all the vertical pieces cut before calling it quits due to the weather. The ribs didn't get rained out, by the way. They, they were pretty darn good. On the next good day of weather, I started by cutting more of the J trim. The metal installation is much quicker than the wood. First, the top J trim piece is installed, and I used a clamp to hold it in place while I punched holes for regular wood screws. I didn't go crazy with wood screws here because the panel screws will also secure the trim later. The vertical J trim is added next, making sure to tuck it into the top piece. And on the bottom, a piece of base trim is added. Now, I didn't secure this with screws at all. Instead, I just used clamps to hold it in place while the panels are added panel screws are what will secure it. I'm prioritizing the view from the road, which is to my left, so the panels are installed right to left. 
That way, the overlap is away from the main direction it will be seen from. Now, regarding the screw location, one method is to use a punch to mark all of the panels while they're still stacked, but I opted to just mark and drive the screws in place, just to prevent myself from making any dumb mistakes marking the panels in the wrong spot. I put a pair of marker lines on my awl, one at two and a half inches for the top screws and one at one inch for the bottom screws. One screw in each section into the top 2x4 and one screw in each section into the bottom 2x4. When installing the bottom screws, I made sure to pull up on the base trim with my boot so it sits flush with the bottom of the panels. And all of the metalwork is definitely faster than the wood framing part. This wasn't a situation where I could make the wall length a multiple of the panel length, so one rip cut was necessary for each wall section. This first wall ended with a two inch wide piece measured from the center of the closest rib. And I marked and cut the right side of the next panel with a cutoff wheel in an angle grinder. I'm sure there's better tools for this task, but it's what I had and it worked pretty well. The small piece is tucked into place and secured with screws and the first wall panel is complete. I really liked working with this metal panel system. The J trim completes the top corner nicely and I'm glad I went with adding the base trim as it gives the bottom kind of a more finished look rather than just letting the panel end. Finally, it was the time lapse that my wife was really looking forward to and that is getting all of the tools and clutter out of the way and organizing the space. We still have a lot of work to do, but getting this half wall up was a really good start. I'm not sure what I'm going to do to the inside of the walls, but I definitely want to add some kind of decorative panel to make the inside look a little bit more finished and kind of prevent anything from damaging the metal panels. We also still have to knock out the list of stuff I mentioned earlier, as well as some landscaping, so there's definitely more videos of this space coming as everything evolves. If you want to be notified of the rest of the videos in this Outdoor Kitchen series, be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell and go to jayscustomcreations.com slash newsletter and sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss anything that I publish. That's it for this one. Have a great day and I'll talk to you in the next video. Here. Just stand right there. Mm -hmm. You gonna catch it? Come a little bit. Come a little closer. Right about there. You ready? One, two, three. Good job. Oh, oh. You ready? One, two, three. You ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. What was that? You ready? All right. You want to tell Daddy what our story was about today? What was your story? Let me let me pause this camera and you tell me about story time. Oh, dinosaurs. Ah. Dinosaurs?